Welcome back, adventurers, to the Lucky Die. Previously, Balance breaks someone's will. Ra meets the Spectre again. Squash asks not to be hit, as Zoltana is a little bit sneaky. With the Duragar threat neutralized, our companions find the entrance to the Lost City a little bit more than they bargained for, as Ra activates a bizarre set of rooms. What happened to Ra when he stepped into the circle? What will they need to do to enter the city? But more importantly, will they even be able to open the door that has no key? I guess we're about to find out. Welcome back to the Lucky Die. The last we found ourselves, Raoul had passed out in the middle of a antechamber room. Um, he is currently passed out on the inside of a big ass circle of runes, which glowed blue, shot a little kind of blue wall into the air, and Raoul immediately passed out. He's now passed out probably a couple of couple of feet into this circle. The blue wall has faded down for those of you who aren't Raoul and can't see this anymore. Everything seems to have returned to normal except, well, actually it probably is normal that Raoul is passed out in the middle of this circle. <laughs> um, the room you find yourself in is pretty large. There is a 40 foot diameter rune of blue runes on the grounds, um, which Balance has been investigating. Um, there is in the center of this a kind of plinth Again, marble. There is uh, what's it's uh, looks like a cup or a basin on top. Um, on top of that, there was a floating golden apple with something carved into the side of it, but that disappeared the moment the Rouse stepped his foot over it. Um, there is a large door which is about fifteen feet high. It's steel. It's covered in cogs and levers, um, and it also possibly appears to be something carved into those, but you can't really tell from here. Um, that is basically what you guys see. So that's that's a refresher on the room. Go. What'd you do? Is there anything going on inside of the blue barrier wall? Uh, now the blue barrier wall has come down. Um, there was a floating golden apple above the um, above the chalice in the center, um, but that has disappeared the moment he walked in there. And the barrier is gone. And the barrier is in fact gone. Yes. Font. They are elegantly carved font. Um, uh, there are also four pillars in this room. Do the runes like like look like they're still active? Um, they look like that thing where they like uh, you know when you turn off the TV, you kind of have that kind of like, like glow that seems to go down yeah. for a little bit on the old CRTs. It looks a bit like that. Uh, Squash is slightly freaking out that uh, the that Ral seems to have been knocked unconscious by magic. <laughs> That's fair. What are we gonna do, guys? Um, Zoltana. Yeah. Do me a favor. Go walk in the circle. See if the barrier comes up again. I'll try to get you out. And if it goes up again, just someone needs to grab Rawl. Uh, okay. And she's going to walk into the barrier. Uh, you walk into the barrier. Sorry, you don't walk into the barrier. You walk over the runes into the center of the circle. Again, it flashes blue and then fades back down. Do you feel any different? Do I? You do not. No. Check on Rawl. Is he get him up again? I'm gonna go over to Rawl, and I'm gonna. You have the salt, the smelling salts. Mm-hmm. Oh, I do. I'm gonna use the smelling salts. I was gonna just smack. Him. I I need to point out that there it's a small bottle of like fragrant medicine. It's not a. It's not salt. So I need to make that very clear for Rawl. No, 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 no. It's smelling salts. <laughs> It's the same thing. Okay. Frequent no, medicine. absolutely not in this situation. 
Um, but you 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 open this little bottle of a uh, little bottle of medicine. It sound it smells smells good. It smells nice. You waft it near his face, and well, you are coming to consciousness. Oh fuck! I panicked. Is everything okay? <clears throat> Maybe. You know, next time you might want to not walk into the rune circle. I'm currently investigating. There was something that I was going to look at over there. Now it's gone. Uh, Quas is gonna slink over to the door. You said it was also car- like had rooms on it. Uh, yes, yeah, so it's a uh, fifteen foot high. It's a large steel door covered in cogs and levers. Now you're here. You can see that each cog is engraved with uh, what languages do you speak? Dwarven, halfling, and common, and under dark. Uh, they appear to be engraved with some sort of dwarven rune. Um, there is also now you're here. You notice that there is no handle, no hinges, um, and there is a very small plaque sort of in the center of this um, door, and. It's uh, now you're here. It says in English, sorry, in common. My bad. Um, in common, it says, uh, "Do you know how your story could end? Knowing what you know, do you wish to proceed?" Ral Zoltano, can you check out the plinth that's in the center of that circle there? Since you're already in there. Oh sure. See if there's any writings. All right. In the center of this circle, there is uh, there's a font. Um, so like the one you would have in like in a, in a church where you baptize the baby thing. Okay. Yeah. Um, I didn't, I described it when we did the previous episode. I, I, my brain flipped over it this time around. Um, there's basically, um, there's basically a font in the center of this room. It's very ornately carved. Um, and in the center of it, uh, if you guys are heading over there, you can see that it's, it's half filled with water. Mm -hmm. Um, you can see that from where you're standing, but if you, until you get close, you can't see it much more. This is where the golden apple was floating. Um, I've been told to walk up and inspect the thing, so I'm going to walk up and uh, look at the chalice. Um, font, chalice is my fault. I'm sorry, it's a font. Um, mm-hmm. Now you're here. Um, you can see that it's uh, very elegantly carved. Um, that it's made of like a dusky pink, dark marble, but the actual bowl itself is a lighter color. Um, as you look into it, as you look into it, you can see it's probably about half filled with water. And at the very bottom of it, there appears to be a um, like a like a crudely drawn painting of an apple and a key. And the key is on the side of the apple. It's painted there, half filled with water. Hmm. What do you see? There's an apple with a key on it. It's like it's painted at the bottom of the water. Hmm. Squash, what do you have over there by the door? Squash slowly turns around. It's The door doesn't have any handles. It seems to be some kind of a trick or a puzzle or something. I don't know. It, it says in common on the door, do you know how your story could end? Knowing what you know, do you wish to proceed? It also has a bunch of dwarven rooms on it. Hmm. What does that mean? There are also four pillars in this room, just as a heads up. Are the pillars outside of the magical room circle? Uh, they're kind of like touching the edge of it, so they're not inside it. But All right. yeah, balance will go check those out. Uh, okay. Uh, can you guys take a- leave the circle? This question just kind of meekly says, "Ah, <laughs> it might be worth them trying." Yeah, why don't the two of you step out of the circle while I take a look at these? Sure, I'll I'll step out of the circle. As you walk to the edge of the runes, you try and walk, but it's like you've hit a barrier. Ross now starts bleeding. (laughs) (laughs) And there it is. (laughs) Um, Can I touch the surface of the water? Yeah. Does it... Does it kill me? (laughs) You touch the surface of the water... It feels like cold water, but it's a little bit more viscous than you would expect. It's a bit thicker. It's not water water. It's, it's something thicker. Not exactly a gel gel, but it's it's not water per se. Mm. It's a gelatinous cube that has changed shape. Raw dice. 
<laughs> Ral's not dead. <laughs> I only I get to kill you off with a random word. <laughs> GM word dead. It's the most powerful spell. <laughs> um, this seems thicker than water. I could try to reach for this apple painting and see if it does anything. Maybe there's a key on it. I would wait before doing anything of the sort. You need to have all the information you can garner before you start taking action. Especially with puzzles like these. That's how you get yourself hurt. Hmm. As it is, you really shouldn't have touched that liquid. Uh, okay. <laughs> As he says that, Squash pokes one of the carved gears on the door. And uh, uh, nothing seems to fit a place for you. <sighs> nothing. All right, Fel- pillars. <laughs> Take an investigation check. Balance is ignoring the idiots at this point. Um, I think at, before I so really cut him over, I think Squash, you were also going to have a look at the pillars. Did I pick that up right? No, I was just making sure where they were. I'm actually more, okay, I'm probably investigating the door again or more, seeing if uh, I missed anything. 13 investigation okay. on the pillars. Okay. Um, on a 13, um, four figures. Hmm. Okay, um, they all just seem to be carvings. Um, each pillar seems to have its like an own unique thing carved on it. They seem to be following a theme. The first one seems to be of like um, figures standing in front of a door and continuing on this. They look, they're trying to get through it, but can't. Um, the second one, there looks like they are drinking water. Um third one on a 13 looks like they're consuming an apple but when they consume it it looks as though some sort of dark energy seems to be surrounding the person who eats it um, and they seem to be writhing in pain and the fourth one is this kind of pain clouded person holding hands with some other people and walking through the door well I'm not a fan of that what is it um Squash is moving over to the pillar he's reading when he says that. Take investigation check too if you want. Oh, sure. Be, 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 investigation. 31. What the Damn. fuck? <laughs> That's a crit. That's a crit. Balance dies. He gives up <laughs> on his life as an investigator. Uh, let's say that you laid down a very good foundation. <laughs> <laughs> Or he's closer to the ground um, and he sees the detail you don't. Fuck mine, Aethel. Um, okay. Um, what you also see now that you're d- lower down to the ground and can see things a little more intently because um, you're like half an inch from it, um, you can see that on the final one um, where the looks like people are walking through the door with someone clouded in pain, as you kind of look around a bit more on this pillar, you notice that there are other similar carvings and you notice that this cloud pain seems to be like on the next drawing round. It's like two people have a cloud pain, but it seems to be less cloudy on those and they walk through and you look around a bit further and it just seems to continue in that vein. The more people who have this cloud vein, uh, cloud of pain, um, it seems to be less on each person, the more of them that there are. Mm. Squash kind of just absentmindedly goes, yeah, there's like a bunch of picture of people here. It seems, yeah, maybe. What do you think this means? I don't get this. If I had to guess, it seems like the, at least what it's trying to tell us to do is that we all need to enter the circle, drink this, whatever the liquid is in that bowl there. I'm assuming that the apple that was there previously is going to appear and... Based on what I can tell, it looks like one of us is going to have to consume it, suffer excruciating pain, and then we can go through the door. Oh, that does not sound good. No. Uh, yeah, no, uh, yeah, count me out. Balance, take a wisdom check for me. Sure. Wisdom check. That's going to be bad. I have a plus zero. Oh. That is a nine. I'm smart, not wise. Carry on. You just need more experience in the world, man. I need more ASIs, I think, is what you're trying to say. (laughs) I'm not indicating that with any nodding of my head right now. (laughs) Uh, Carry on. I can see if I can make the apple appear. It's no problem. Uh, How do we make it appear? Well, 
Squash, hold on. Since squash was about to enter the circle. No, Squash. <laughs> Why? Since you just as he like keeps his foot like halfway <laughs> over the line, you're like whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Since these two are already in the circle, why don't you two be the guinea pigs so that we all aren't doomed to die if that's the case? Oh, great. Listen, I'm not the one that decided to step into the rune circle with any out any prior knowledge. Yeah. Jesus, dude. You do realize if the Dwerker come now, the two of them are inside the circle and we're outside it. Right, but the Duergar could enter just as easily as any of us. They can't get out of the circle, however. No, I mean, you sent in the other big guy to catch the other big guy, leaving us two little guys outside. Hey. <laughs> to solve a puzzle, you have to touch the pieces balance. What do I do to get the fucking apple? I want out of here. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Drink the liquid then. That seems to be the general consensus of what needs to happen. Drink the... Oh. Okay. I'll start drinking the liquid, I guess. That's what okay. I've been told to do. <laughs> okay. Balance is um, watching. This is a terrible idea. Uh, Zoltana, are you helping or are you just going to watch? Uh, I'm going to go touch the apple. There is no apple. All right. You feel the same thing. You put your hand in the, into, the, into this not quite water. Um, you touch the oh. bottom of the font and you can just feel the painting of the apple below. Fair enough. Um. Uh, I was more asking, are you helping to drink this fluid or are you oh. just going to let him carry on? You know what? Fuck it. I'm going to drink it too. Okay. Interesting. I'm going to actually, I'm going to, before, has he drank already? Yeah, I was um, about. Um, I want to yeah. backtrack and smack his hand, the water, his hand from the water and drink it before he can. Are you going to allow this, Ral? He goes through so much. Oh, <laughs> He goes through well, tell so him that. Much. Tell him. Tell him that. Yeah. <laughs> Ralph, fuck you. I'm drinking it. Oh, it's thirsty. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if All one right. of us is going to die. Okay. All right. So I need to know, how is this resolving? Which one of you is drinking first? Are you both drinking? Or are neither of you drinking? I'm going to like straight up push him out of the way and just stick my face in the water and lap it up. <sighs> Okay. As she's drinking, Rawl's like behind her watching. He's like, if one of us should die, what? <laughs> uh, as you say that, her face is already enveloped in this fluid. Um, Zoltana is, okay. Um, you she take takes two just- very... <laughs> Yeah, you take two very big gulps. Uh, this is where I will stop you and give you an option to not carry on. Um, you take very two very big gulps as you put your face, uh, your face into this liquid. And as you take the first gulp, you feel like a very strange, unnatural, cold feeling to this. Like touching it with your face, it feels, you know, it feels room temperature. Swallowing it down feels like the touch of cold death itself. And you take a second very big gulp. I need you to take 10 necrotic damage. Okay, fine. And it's unhealable, reduces your HP, and cannot be recovered until you have a long rest. Okay, I'm going to stop drinking at this point. You're not done. When you take these two very big gulps, I need you to do the following. Roll a D4 and a D3. Oh, my God. Rip. (laughs) <laughs> I got a 2 and a 1 That is not a 1d3 You typed 1s3 one one. <laughs> What is even an s3 anyway I think it's the same fucking thing It's a 1 <laughs> <laughs> Okay As you This is your first by the way You're having another one in a minute As you take your first very big gulp And you feel the touch of cold death upon you Your vision blacks out And what you see in front of you is you see, you feel yourself covered in cold, cold water. Um, And as you step through this door, to your left, you see a series of spikes shooting out of the wall, slamming into your chest and pinning you against the other wall. You cough and you splutter, but you you can't breathe. It's, It's punctured one of your lungs and you begin to slowly drown in your own blood. And as you look down and look around, you realize that you have a tail. You're way taller than you should be. You're covered in black scales. Am and then I your vision comes back. Roll. 
You are. Roll a d4 and roll a d3. Again? Okay. Yes. Because you took a seven, second gulp. That's a four. Oh, God. And a two. <laughs> okay. Zoltana, you are standing in front of a very familiar figure. You're standing in front of Dravos, your ex. He and you are engaged in the middle of a bloody battle. He is covered in cuts and slashes, and you can see that you've taken off a part of one of his hands. And as you launch forward with Cal, uh-huh. you feel a sharp stabbing pain in your torso, and you look down, and you see that he stabs you with a rapier. You see him smile and grin, and he twists and pulls it out, and you drop to the ground, and you look at yourself. You are covered in as many cuts as he is, if not possibly more. And you feel it as he twists and he drops to the ground as you know he's pierced your heart. And then your vision comes back to you. Sounds right. It's pretty fucking metal. <laughs> uh, you are possibly halfway through this fluid. I am. As you basically, I'm going to say for the sake of brevity and the fact I don't, I, <laughs> I'm giving you the chance not to take 20 necrotic damage. No are you putting your head up? Yeah, and oh, I'm taking putting my a head deep up. breath. Yes. This is what happens after you take two very big gulps. Oh, uh, whoa. You sh- shouldn't do it alone. The painting says, the carvings say that we need to do it. There, more people should do it. It's better. Oh, okay, I think. Bud, cut. You, you come in, you you drink this fucking shit. All right. Walk, squash walks in. One. Uh, uh, okay. I can drink. It's fine. Flash of blue. Flash of blue. Oh yeah, as soon as it flashes through, Squash winches and waits for himself to lose consciousness. <laughs> You're fine. You're not real. <laughs> Wait. Balance is pr- pinching the bridge of his nose, just shaking his head like, oh, God damn it. What happened, Zoltana? Are you okay? Uh, I was you. And our lungs were pierced. It was weird. That makes no sense. No, it doesn't. But that's what happened. Are you saying that you had a vision? Uh, yeah, I was Ral, and we got like pierced, and our lungs got broke. It's pretty fucking metal. We were drowning in our own blood. Where did this? What? And then I was me, and then uh, it was me and Dravos, and uh, he stabbed me in the heart. Excellent. Would not recommend. <laughs> Zero out of ten. Lovely. I don't well, want to drink this um, anymore. Come try it, Balance. You'll love it. Um, no, I'm quite all right. Uh, after the mirror incident, I think I'll uh, abstain. Thank you. I just want out of here. Um, I, I'm guessing you are done. Oh, yeah, I'm not doing any more of that shit. She doesn't look well, by the way. Um, you know that kind of yeah, that kind of like papery skin look you get with people who have aged? Mm-hmm. She has a degree of that on her. You guys can see this quite clearly. Mm. And it's a result of... Mm, yeah, it's a result of necrotic damage. I think some of you would recognize this anyway. Well, one of you is going to have to drain the rest of it, I assume. Squaws is like pulling himself up so he can get his face in the thing. <laughs> Because I'm, it's, uh, it's a bit high for you. Yeah, <laughs> but you can do it if you want to. Uh, he Thomas starts going to go stand by the door. By the way, <laughs> he starts okay. pulling himself up and like looks over to <laughs> Sultana, who's like kind of writhing and like no. Looks over to uh, <laughs> to to Ral, who he's uh, deathly afraid of. Like no, okay, I can do this myself. Just pulls himself up into the basin. <laughs> okay. You basically, because because you're you're so short, and I think it's adorable. You pull yourself up. So you're sitting on the edge of the font. Um, so you can get a handful of this water or stick your face in it, whatever you want to do. Handful of water. You're going to go for a handful of water. Mm. Okay. Uh, I also need you to roll a d4 and a d3. Uh, you also take five necrotic damage, oh boy. which is unhealable until you have and reduce your maximum HP temporarily until you have a long rest. There we go. Uh, I got a four on the... F- and a one. And a one, yeah. Okay. As you... Take this in. Again, you feel this bizarre, cold touch of death type feeling to it. And you are drenched, covered in water from head to toe. Um, And you're passing through a door. 
And as you pass through, you see it just that moment too late. On the left-hand side, a bunch of spikes shoot out and take you in the chest. They take you in the throat. They take you in the back of the knees and you feel yourself pinned against the wall. And as you look around and look down, you realize that you're covered in armor and you're a lot taller than you used to be. Hmm. And also a female. <clears throat> you are Zoltana. Squash winches and kind of pulls himself tall. Uh, that's that's horrible. That's not good. I don't want to do more of this. I've got it. I just want to get out of here. Okay. Let's no, finish. no, we live here now. <laughs> we just fucking live here. <laughs> <laughs> roll a d4, roll a d3. You take five necrotic damage. Uh, temporarily reduces your maximum HP. Can't be recovered until you have a long rest. Uh huh. Two. And a two. Okay. <laughs> you are walking through a city. Um, the city, there are people frozen in place. There are creatures that you recognize, creatures that you don't. Um, there are humans, halflings, tieflings, uh, what looks like giant cat people. And you hear this sound behind you. And you suddenly feel as if you're being watched. And as you look up and around, you see these dark, elongated creatures that seem to have no eyes and they jump on you. There is a score of them, and you feel yourself being pinned down and ripped apart. And as you look around, you can see your friends running to catch up to you, but it's too late as one of them rips out your throat. And it is you. And then you come back to the state of being. There is what looks like a single dose left. Okay. You okay? Uh, I can do another one, it's no problem. Uh, that's up to you. Squash reaches down and takes another hand mouthful. Okay. Rinse and repeat. Yes. Uh, Five HP down. D4 uh, and a D3. D4. On the D3, I rolled a one, and on the D4, I rolled a one. All right, I don't roll double ones. <laughs> Always our lucky numbers. Um, <laughs> You are in a large squarish room. There is, this room is, com it's filled with water. You can feel yourself looking around. You can see your friends fighting what look like two very large skeletal creatures. Um, one of them appears to be magically inclined and the other appears to be wielding a very big weapon, but you can't really focus on the details right now because you can't breathe. And you know that you've just run out of air. Every, every last piece of air has just left your lungs and you can't help it. You take a breath in and you begin to cough and splutter and take more of this water in as there's no reprieve. You look up, there's no air bubble above you. This room is filled with water and you cough and you splutter and you put your hands out. But they're not your hands. And you realise as you look around the only person missing from your vision is balance. Your vision goes dark as you drown. And then you come back into reality. Squash, like, slowly climbs off the, the pinch... Um, as you were on there, sorry, as you come back in, yep. um, a small golden apple with what looks like a key carved into the side of it appears at the bottom of the font. I think we can leave now. We have the key. Uh, yeah, and Squaw's hands roll the, the key, the apple. According to the pillars here, it looks like whoever eats the apple is going to be in a lot of pain, but supposedly that's the only way through the door. Wait, we have to eat the apple? Balance, you didn't drink any of the water. The rest of us already did our pain. It's N your turn. No, I think whoever drank the water has to eat it. Raul eats the apple. Oh. oh my God. Raul, are you eating all the apple? Yeah. This sounds like nothing new to Raul. And Jesus Squash didn't Christ. tell us about the other paintings, so <laughs> I have no clue. Yeah, he just wants to get out of here. So he's just going to kind of eat as much of it as he can, as fast as he can. <laughs> um, as you guys begin discussing this, you heard him slightly, <laughs> as like, <laughs> just like, <laughs> shoot his way through this apple. Like there's no tomorrow. Raul, oh my God. <laughs> I appreciate um, you, Raul. I want you to know that. <laughs> you chew your way through this apple and you suddenly get a flash. 
You get a flash of balance drowning. You get a flash of yourself being stabbed in the chest by spikes. You get a flash of squash drowning. You get a flash of Sultana being killed by a bunch of spikes. And it hurts. It hurts a lot. Roll 3d6. That's the damage you're about to take. 12. You take 12 damage. Just straight damage. No necrotic, none of that bullshit. Just straight damage. Gotcha. Um, what you guys see is as soon as like Bal- as soon as um, Raoul swallows the very last of this apple, you see his eyes roll into the back of his head and go white, Jesus and he stands Christ. temporarily still, and he doesn't seem to be breathing. He doesn't seem to be moving, and then with a gasp, he comes back. <clears throat> Raoul, I need you to add. Let me just check. I need you to add halfling and gnomish to your list of languages. <laughs> Halfling and Domish? Yes. Interesting. Still doesn't know how to use a sword. Okay. <laughs> you all could have eaten the apple. <laughs> yeah, um, so Raoul, as you're kind of like as as you guys see his eyes roll back and he takes a big deep breath in, Raoul, you become aware that y- you hear this very high pitched, like kind of like it's talking. Um, and you hear this kind of very low, kind of like guttural sound and you realise that you can just yeah you could figure out what they meant as you gain the languages Raul Raul's kind of just shaking and looking around (laughs) Raul you good? I I I think so How many fingers am I holding up? Balance is holding up three fingers Raul? Three Okay All right. Can we leave now? Well, um, let's see. Supposedly, come to the edge where the door is here. See if you can get past the rune circle. I do so. All right. You walk to the edge of the runes and you cross over them. All right. And you other two? Uh, Squash walks over the rune circle. And as he says, he, yeah. th- he says out loud, or he's more thinking out loud, if somebody wouldn't have drunk in any water, would they not be able to pass? I wouldn't think so. Who knows? According to the descript- the images on the pillars, we just need to hold hands and proceed through the door. Oh. Fuck that, I'm not holding hands. Then I guess you're getting left behind. I drank the fucking water. I don't think I'm going to get left behind. I think I'll be fine. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Walk through the door, Zoltana, please. L- Lord of the doors. Walk- I'm going to try to walk through the door. You walk up to the door. Okay. Good job, you're standing in front of the door. No. I'm going to try to go through the door. No, we Broken should do nose. the thing. <laughs> do the thing. The, the no, no, no. She needs to learn on her own, Squash. It's fine. Let her go ahead. <laughs> you walk forward, I assume, because like, you know, reflexes, you put your hands out in front of you. Basically, as you walk into this door, it doesn't appear to be moving or shifting for you. Fine. I'm not holding hands with balance because you are, you fucking basically were just like, hey, friends, go com- make yourself hurt so that we can all get through this door. It's kind of fucked up. Let's just go through the door. Just saying. And she goes and she holds hands with Squash. Oh. Watch out for spikes. Sultana. Spikes? I will. I am drowning. Uh, Squash looks too arch. (laughs) Balance. (laughs) And the monsters in a city where people were standing still. Oh. Yeah, of course. We're going and getting there. stabbed in the hat. Uh, Listen, if this was us seeing how our deaths are going to go or whatever, can't be bothered by it now. Squash grabs onto balances. I'm going to go with trouser leg. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we have squash between, uh, <laughs> between Zoltana and, and balance. Raw will grab a uh, balance. Okay. Um, are you guys walking towards the door issue? Yeah. Sweet. Um, as you guys make your way towards the, the door, you, Raoul, hear the words. Uh, just whispering in the back of your head, like just behind one of your ears, if somebody was there, but they're not. Um, you hear the phrase that's carved on the door. Do you know how your story could end? And knowing what you know, do you still wish to proceed? 
A yes. With that, the door in front of you, you see all the cogs interacting, all the levers, um, and you see them all essentially just pull the door apart. Um, you realize it was actually just mainly constructed of cogs and levers. And as they interact with each other and begin to spin and stir, they begin to pull out from the center and create this large opening. Ahead of you, you can see a very, you can see a tunnel. Um, which one of you is carrying light? Because I believe two of you can't see in the dark. Squass used to be holding a torch. Okay. Just want to check who has light. Um, you can see this long, roughly hewn tunnel. It's not, the bottom is not flat. It's no way made properly. It's just a tunnel. And as you look down it, you can see it just suddenly gets, it gets smaller along this decline. That's the right word. Um, the tunnel gets smaller as it goes away from you. Um, and it appears to like twist and turn a little bit. Um, but for those of you who can't see more than the 60 foot given by the light, that's all you see. For those of you who can, at the very end where it like goes down and turns and twists a little bit out of your view, you can see there's a little bit of a mist on the ground. That's all you guys can see. Well, that doesn't look foreboding at all. Mm. It's going to be fine. We just need to get to the city now. Mm. All right. But well, there were... What? Weren't, weren't we trying to find a place to stop? Hmm. After the things that I saw, the city seems like a bad place to stop. It is, but we have the 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 portal shimmer behind us. the The breathers come from there, I think. So <sighs> we'll be fine, probably. Maybe we should just perhaps go on for a little bit longer and see if we can find somewhere that's a little enclosed that we could uh, take a rest at. Squash, you're pretty good with those sorts of things, so lead the way, I suppose. All right. Squash takes the lead. He does not let go of Sultana or Balance. <laughs> uh, you guys walk through the door um, into this kind of like uh, tunnel, and it's 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 slippery underfoot. It's uh, the kind of mist that the two of you that can see much further down. It's definitely a, a kind of a, a dampish mist. Everything here feels wet and horrible basically you kind of get that tang of tang of almost salt water um the sea and as you walk through this you hear clicking and sorry did you put your hand up yes what's up uh being that they mentioned spikes earlier mm -hmm. uh balance is going to be keeping an eye out for anything that looks like it would be a trap trigger okay so give me two seconds i guess that sure um, as you guys walk through um, and you get a couple of feet in and you guys completely clear the door, you can hear that whirring mechanicalness. And as you look behind you, the door is reconstructing itself. The barrier is being placed back up and you lose the light that was kind of in that room. Um, okay, so take either a survival or a perception. Survival. 13. Balance. <laughs> Oh, I thought... So you, you were the one that was going to do it, so I was like, all right. <laughs> oh, no, I thought that this was Somebody a different role for... Gun, uh, I thought this was a different role for... No, this is to see those. Uh, I did mention this to you the other day. Uh, I actually have passive perception 22, 21. Okay. Good to know. Can, Can I focus? argue investigation? Argue it. I am looking for <laughs> minor details, things that would be hidden yes, of out of sight. Can. I'm fucking with you, of course you can. <laughs> 16. Raoul, are you going to get in on this perception investigation survival check? Um, yes, I don't know about I'm you, being, but I like my lungs. I'm being very <laughs> cautious um, after what I've seen and heard. So as much as I can look around in the very low light that we have, I'll be looking. Yeah, go for it. Perception. Because Sultana was a rolled perception of eight. Oh, yeah. 10. Okay. Um, as you continue down here um, and you're looking for all of this kind of um, looking for potential traps, potential triggers for these spikes, as you're walking down these, uh, down this roughly hewn tunnel, um, you notice it's getting steadily more ang angled. It's not the word I'm thinking of. Steep. It's getting steadily more steep. Um, 
but you don't see anything in the wall to indicate that there would be uh, at any traps. There are no holes in the wall. There seems to be no, um, like, here's a conveniently placed stone for you not to step on and trigger a trap. You don't seem to see any of that as you walk down. However, as you get down and you turn and you look into this kind of like mist area, you see this kind of like it's open into a slightly larger cavern. Um, it's still small. Um, it's not large and echoing like, you know, some of the other ones you've been into. Um, it's very well contained, maybe six dwarves wide, maybe 15 dwarves long. It's, it's not a big place. Um, and you can see this low hanging mist and you can see that there are stalag mites. Held it. And you can also see on your 16 investigation that there is slight movement behind some of these stalactites. It's slow. It's in the mist. You can see it moving the mist slightly, but you can't get a good grasp on what. Ahead of that, you can see that there is another much, much smaller tunnel. Um, it looks like maybe a person could fit through there, not much more. Um, probably just tall enough for Rao to walk through comfortably. Um, this is what you see. Uh, and to answer the question, there doesn't appear to be any traps on the 16. All right. Balance is going to immediately like make like a gesture for everybody to stop. Uh, I think you're still holding Squash's hand, so you just stop. <laughs> <laughs> Squ- Squash is holding on to like the, the co- uh, my oh, coattail. Tell your trouser leg, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You said coattails. Did your jacket have coattails or is it just a cool looking jacket? I don't know. I always imagined it's kind of like one of those like half trench coat looking leather jacket type things. Okay. Of course, you may have the choice if you're holding on to the cool looking jacket or is lame trouser leg. Lame trouser leg. Lame. (laughs) Carry on. All right. Balance will remember that. (laughs) (laughs) Arch will remember this. Yep. Uh, Balance is going to say in the mental link and then separately through telepathy to squash. There's movement up ahead in the mist. Looks like there's something disturbing it. Again in the mental link and then... Because I basically have to like say it in the mental link and then go back through to telepathy because squash mm-hmm. is not in the mental link. And Balance is going to say, do we want to try to engage or do we want to go back up the tunnel and then rest since the door closed behind us? Do you think it is... Whatever it is has seen us. Did it seem like whatever it was that was in the mist was like seemingly coming towards us or it was just kind of there and we noticed it? You just noticed it. Like you literally only just noticed it. Okay. You just noticed a slight movement. You couldn't tell how many were and you can tell how big it was. Okay. You didn't get anything other than you know something is there. I'm not sure. It doesn't seem like it. I only just noticed it now. If we back up, we may be able to avoid detection. Uh, Squash is peering into the mist. He's trying to see whatever Balance saw. But of course, I Perception check. I don't have as good of a uh, dark vision as him. Well, let's put it like this. It may be too slightly too far, but you'd get disadvantage of that, but you get advantage because of the fact he's pointed it out. So it's just a standard roll. All right. So then 22 just was what you rolled. Christ. I don't want you guys to become level 10. Please don't. Um. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair... Uh, Squash is the high level uh, skill monkey, or yeah. not? Yeah, he is. He's a skill monkey. I fucking hate you. Um, you should. <laughs> on a Twenty-two. You spot what looks like to be a small humanoid, probably. Well, I say small humanoid, taller than you, but still small for a humanoid. Um, probably maybe four feet tall, something like that. Um, and as you see it moving around, you think you spot what might be a human girl. Um, and they seem to be moving around. They seem to be skulking between these different like stalagmites. Um, from their kind of like general demeanor, body language, they seem to be scared. They seem to be deliberately hiding, or they could be stalking you. You're not entirely sure, but they are definitely making their way towards you, trying to be as quiet and stealthy as possible. If it wasn't for the fact you got a twenty plus, you probably wouldn't have even spotted that. So. <laughs> Uh, you can see slight movement in the mist. That's what got danger eye to it. Squash uh, looks up and just whispers, I, 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 don't know, I don't know what it is, but it's either scared of us or wants to eat us. I, I know that doesn't help. Um, but they are small. I, they might be dwarves, I think. 
I'm not sure I can take another fight after everything. Then let's back up to the door. That way at least we have uh, only one angle to worry about and we'll take a rest. They're going to come for us. Tell me what you guys are doing right now. Are you standing in the middle of this thing? Are you trying to hide a little bit? Are you leaning around the corner? I need to know exactly where you are. Uh, Uh, Where did I spot them, I guess would be... Um, probably just as you can like turn the corner as you put your feet into this mist. The mist just feels damp. There's nothing. You don't think there's anything weird about it. Um, but as you kind of like, yeah, probably just as you turn the corner. Probably would have taken a step back around the corner then. Okay. Um, in that case, I will allow you all to make stealth rolls for me, please. Can I help them? It's a group you check. probably should because... Oh. Hey, I got a 15. I got a 13. Ready to, for me to fail miserably? Roll you th- got it. You got this. Three. <laughs> <laughs> I rolled three. 18 with bonuses. Well, let's see if rolling a d20. I'll put it at a disadvantage. I'll be fair to you guys. <laughs> By the love of grace or whatever god you may or may not follow... You guys managed to backtrack up the corridor a little bit, up this tunnel. Um, You don't hear anything approaching. You don't see anything approaching. Possibly you got out without being noticed. All right. Thank God. I think we should go back to the door and just rest there. That way, the only direction we need to worry about anything coming from is supposedly down this way, since I can't imagine that the uh, the Duogar are going to try to do the whole apple bit that we just had to deal with. Uh, yeah, I highly doubt it. Um, the this is uh, a torch I got from Raoul. Do we have more? I have a few more. Okay. Um, this one's about to burn out. I think it will burn out. I will be useless on watch without a torch. Sure, I will set my torches out, and you can take some. Um, I think I had a handful. Um, probably like four or five. We'll from... go with four. And I think okay. you've burnt through one, right? Yeah, I'm working on it. Yeah. <laughs> Let's say for the sake of hilarity, it's sputtering. <laughs> it's about to go out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You guys backtrack up to um, just in front of the door. It doesn't open, even though you get pretty close to it. It seems like you are on this side. Um, you guys are setting up camp. Mm-hmm. Yep. Fire, food, all that good shit. All that good, good. All right, okay, so um, can I have watches? Is anyone saying doing anything? Um, let's just, let's just, I'll, if you want to. I'll take the first watch since um, I largely have been unharmed. Not counting the, the drink, I'm fine. You guys completely saved my ass against the Dwergars. Thank you guys for that. Yeah, sure. I'm going to go to sleep. Sure. I think it would be a good idea if the two people with dark vision took the first two watches. That way we can serve torches instead of having to use portion of one and put it out and then have to light it up again and everything. And then you could just transition using the one torch from one person to the other. Uh, you asking me to take the second watch? Is that what's going on? Pretty much. I kind of feel like, fuck you. But also, I guess that's fair. Zoltana, have you given any consideration as to why I avoided putting myself at any unknown risk? Uh, because you still kind of think of us as your flunkies, right? That's what it sort of feels like sometimes, to be quite honest. Do you think so little of me? No, it's not that I think so little of you. It's not that I think little of you at all. It's just that sometimes I feel like you see us as underlings. Zoltana, suppose that that water was poison, and I drank mm-hmm. it, and I died. The right. three of you go on and continue the adventure. Sure. You find all the pieces, but where's Monak? How are you going to resurrect this hero if you don't have all the pieces? How are you going to find him? You know, balance... Have you considered that if you died, Monarch's not necessarily leaving your body or your, or wherever the fuck he is inside you your brain? 
feel. That's... Marnock respond at that moment. And he says to you, Balance, I wouldn't be with you. I would move on to another host. As I suspected. No, as Monarch has just told me, and I pretty much assumed all along, the moment I die, Monarch is gone and moves on to another host. And you'd have to go finding him all over again. Nothing and is guaranteed in this life. Nothing is guaranteed anywhere. That We'd does not find, mean I should be reckless. We would find Monarch if we had to. Your life is not more important than any of us just because you have Monarch inside your head. That's yes, all I'm saying. No, it's not. It's not. You know, if Monarch's going to move on, if Mon if you died, which would be terrible, because I like you, Balance. I really do. We're friends. We, we're we starting to get along. It still feels like you think that you're better than us in a lot of ways. Because you were rich, because you were this, that, and the other thing, because you have this special voice inside your head. It's, I get it. But sometimes when you do things like, you know, let your friends suffer, because, God forbid, you died and Monarch moved on. Well, God forbid one of us dies. You know, whatever. My point being, and may I guess, you know, my feelings are my feelings. And maybe you guys feel differently and that's fine. I'm not going to argue with you if you feel differently. If, if, if Rolf, for instance, you think that Balance's life is more important because he's got Monarch inside his head. That's fine. That's your feelings. That's valid. It makes me feel like shit, however, when Bal when Rawl is ready to go out there and fucking die for us, but you're not. That's all I'm saying. That's my feeling. So I'll, I'll get over it and I'll I'll calm down and I'll get over it. I will. But that's just how it makes me feel. Simply, you can try to argue with my feelings and that's fine, but you're not going to change them. That's all I'm saying. In these circumstances, Altana, I am more than willing to put myself at risk because even under normal circumstances, I, I'm going to die far before you two. I'm only 22 now and I have exceeded my expectations by 12 years. I am less important. You're not less important. You could die at any moment and that I understand that, but you're not less important. I have ambitions. I want to go save my wife. I want to go do this, that. I went and I drank that water. I was trying to push you out of the way of drinking that water because I didn't want you to get hurt. That's all I'm saying. It. That's what friendship is to me. That's what I'm saying here. That's just nice of you. And with that, she goes and she lies down. <sighs> Raw will kind of sigh and sit down over somewhere close to balance since balance is taking the first wash. Um, balance. Yes. Uh, with, I, there are things going on I don't understand. I thought maybe you would know it a little better. What's up? Uh, when we were fighting, um, my hands felt magic. Magic how? It was strange. Like magic, you know, the tingling. There was just magic there when I was hitting things. Hmm. Am I becoming a wizard? <laughs> <laughs> well, that depends. Uh, let's try this. Uh, Balance is going to show... Rawl, the uh, somatic components needed for minor illusion. <laughs> okay. And just be like, here, Rawl, try, try casting magic by doing this sort of motion, and you should be able to create an illusion. Okay. Rawl is seriously stupid and doesn't know better, <laughs> so he is going to follow your lead on this oh, and do the dumb my thing. Good lord. Um, <laughs> make a... Fuck it. Make an intelligence roll. Just a straight <laughs> intellect. 
I'm going to regret this if you nat 20. <laughs> if Raw gets two languages and a fucking magic here, it's a seven. You don't Thank have to worry. God, I don't need to worry. Um, you try and do everything. That Can I use you- my inspiration? <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm not going to use my inspiration. Oh, <laughs> oh, that reminds me. I think balance, you have two or three, right? I only have, we're, we're only allowed to have one. You yelled at me when I, I made a joke a, about it being know, multiple. I, I'm pretty sure you can have, because I gave them to you for very separate reasons. So you just have them. I think you have two. Uh, that, that would be the case then. You yelled yeah, at me last time, but okay. Yeah, because you have one for just, 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 yeah, okay. just have them, but make sure you use them, dude. Um, uh, I will. <laughs> It's fine. Um, okay, yeah. Uh, no, you do everything that balance shows you to do, but nothing at all happens. There's not even a spark, man. There's nothing. <laughs> mm, perhaps not then. Hmm. I don't know. It was strange. Um, am I aware of this sort of thing happening to people? Take a history check. Sure. 25. Jesus. Ooh. Yes, you are. You have heard uh, you have heard tales of um, more accurately you've heard tales of people who it's more okay. In this Those world there are training. yeah, though, there, there are people who in this world can train as monks, not just like the monks who train where Zoltana came from but there are people who follow it a particular way and you know that once they hit a certain level of awareness, once they hit a certain level of their prowess, that they can basically physically manifest magic. It's not something that they necessarily consciously do. It's just because they've become so in tune with themselves that in itself is a form of magic. And that is possibly what is happening to Ram. Would there perhaps be a term for this such as maybe key, one might call it? You may use that term if you wish, yes. All right. So Balance is going to tilt his head slightly, looking at Rawl and be like, it would seem that you're unintentionally following the way of uh, the monks of old. Monks like back at the temple? Um, In a way, yes. Not, not so much the ones that are directly dedicated to gods of the sort, not the ones that are working in like the religious temples, but more... Monks of a a certain order, a certain way of things. They hone their their inner energy, their their key, they call it, and they're able to essentially channel that into certain effects. One of them being that they eventually reach a point where they can essentially use their inner energy as a form of magic. In a sense, it would seem that you've been able to uh, do much the same. Hmm. I would say I'm surprised, but in hindsight, it actually seems to fit for you. You are keenly aware of your body and the things going on with going on within it. Okay. There's another thing I'm not really aware of. After the apple, I could understand small voices. And he gestures over to Squash, just kind of... What is Squash doing at this moment? Zoltana is like rolled over in a half and he's going to sleep. What is Squash doing in this moment? You're, you're aware that this is going on. Christ. As soon as you point over to Squash, it's quite obvious he's listening. <laughs> <laughs> he's standing, twiddling his thumbs, staring at whatever fireplace we've made, and he's listening. <laughs> so, yeah, but Squash is just sitting there, and as soon as you point over to him, he does a very unbelievable... Hmm, what? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> no way. <laughs> Small voices meaning those of halflings? What are you guys talking all about Squash walks over? Squash, do me a favor. Yeah. Say something in halfling. Nah. I swear to God, if you're about to spout something Icelandic, I will. Fly it's not going to be Icelandic. I was wondering if I would insult them or not at this moment, and I don't. Okay. I don't. Uh, Squash just says in Halfling, like, what do you want me to say? Rawl, did you understand what he just said? Absolutely, you can. He, he says, what do you want him to say? Oh, you speak Halfling. Squash says in Halfling. No. 
he's responding back in halfling. You seem to speak it. <laughs> Roll, what Same. did you just say? I respond no in halfling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, hold on a second. Are you meaning to tell me that you, that apple con- conferred to you the ability to understand halfling? Yes, and something else. Fuck, that could have been so useful. Well, I mean, it's helpful for you anyways. Yeah, we can backtalk him now. Oh. <laughs> oh, I see that was in Halfling, too. <laughs> Raw kind of laughed. What? I don't like this now. Talking behind people's backs. <laughs> oh, my. Well, in that either case... strange. Hmm. It seems, Raw, like you've had a stroke of luck. Or two strokes of luck. That is good, I guess. It's certainly not a negative. I'm just gonna go to sleep now. (laughs) Of course. (laughs) Slowly walks away. Very well. All right. Uh, When Squash walks away, Balance turns to Rawl and just says, I hope you understand that I don't view any of you as underlings. It's it's fine. I would have just drank in the water. It's not a big deal to me. I understand. Well, I appreciate it either way. I'm going to say for the sake of brevity that Zoltana, you can hear this. Um, It's just that you are in that throes of about to fall asleep. You can hear this conversation. I'm just throwing it out there for the sake of brevity. Go. It's not an issue of, well, I, I get it. I come off as well, highborn and whatnot. I'm just trying to be the kind of leader that I was raised to be. I was always told that when I'm when I was supposed to be king, that I would have to make the hard decisions that others wouldn't be able to make. And as much as it would pain me if any of you were to perish, I I can't let myself die. Not when the world is at stake with this. Even if the world were to tear itself apart from civil war, at least I would die knowing that I gave it my best, but I can't let Monarch pass on to another host, not when we're this close. We're the first people that have been able to accomplish anything. At this point, can I have Zoltana and Rajak make a wisdom saving throw? Sorry, Squash. 22. Seven. On a seven, you can't resist this, but on a 22, you feel like someone is trying to talk to you through the link. Balance, you feel Marnak sort of trying to interact with you and use you to talk to the others. Uh, do you allow this? I'd allow it. I'll, okay. I'd say to Rawl, it seems that Marnak wants to chime in. Oh, sure. He said something. I've heard them before. It. Yes, you have. Um, and he says, to ease your mind, if something were to happen to you, balance, I know where Falsam is. I will try and make it evident to whoever the parents of the newborn are that I need to be taken to Falsam. I will try everything I can. You're right, the fate of the world is at stake. And as much as I try not to interfere in the lives of the people I am forced to be with, I will make an exception to that rule. Hmm. If it's all the same, Monarch, quite frankly, I welcome your intrusions into my life. Despite all the negative, I think that things could certainly be worse. Yes, as much as I... I have enjoyed spending time with you. But, and it would be better if you weren't to die for simple ease. But you don't actually need me until all of my pieces have been reassembled. It, of course, would be far more difficult if I was on a, another continent, 
but know that I will always try and make my way to Falsen if anything were to happen. I appreciate that. But I also don't think that means I should go out of my way to risk my life, neither. You were raised to be important. And I was raised understanding that I was not going to last very long. So if I do things that might seem like I'm going out of my way to risk myself for you, it's because I want to. You feel Monarch retreat. Is there anything you guys want to do or say before we push on to the next part? I almost got my tail chopped off today, so I'm going to uh, take it easy. That's fine. Uh, I'll keep watch. Squash actually wants to ask Rawl a couple of questions, but he doesn't know how or when to get that time in. Would that fit somewhere in our uh, yeah, sure. schedule? In the, the watch schedule, you guys yeah. are one after the other. All right. So you could also do. say that Raul's going to take some wrapping and wrap it around his tail. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. If you wanted to use that time, he's just kind of idling for, for a couple it. minutes okay. before we'll, he goes to bed. We'll do this and then we'll push on to the next bit. So go. On. Actually, uh, Squash does not want balance uh, conscious when he's talking to Raul. Okay. <laughs> well, to be fair, if it's a crossover, he would be having to meditate. So, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so when uh, Raul wakes Squash to take his watch, he starts bandaging his tail. You can also talk to me in no mission. <laughs> Halfling. <laughs> uh, yes, you can. <laughs> hmm. Which is kind of funny. <laughs> I don't think Squash would feel comfortable doing that. <laughs> Anyway, yeah. um, you guys, you're you're sw swapping over for shift, and you're you're bandaging up your tail. Go, squash. Like he does this usual thing when you touch him, he kind of winches away from you, and then tries to stay out of your way as much as he can. Uh, when you start bandaging your tail, though, he kind of walks over to you, kind of awkwardly, and asks, "What is a monarch?" Oh, um, it is. A person, a person who, uh, how do I explain it? Um, it is someone else that is inside of Balance's consciousness, an old uh, hero of sorts, who uh, is supposed to be stopping the apocalypse. We are trying to find pieces of... Uh, him in the form of powerful magic things to put back together to make him come back and help save the world, basically. Uh, it doesn't really make much sense to me, but that's the best I can explain it. Okay. Uh, yeah, we're, we're here to get the, the orb of Savers, if I remember correctly. Yes, I don't think that is a piece of monarch. Oh, but uh, it will stop the portal, which is very important. That's good. What's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> A question that he hears daily. <laughs> Where should he start? Where to begin? <laughs> no, you said earlier you're supposed to be dead. Oh, the sickness, yes. You're sick? Uh, yes. Too much acid. I make too much of it. Is that why I can hear your flesh sizzling when you sleep? Oh, can you? <laughs> I, uh, probably. That's why I passed out. When I lose focus on staying calm, it will make too much and uh, there's a lot of pain as it kind of gets everywhere and he gestures basically to his whole torso Squash uh, touches his, the scar on his cheek and goes I know it's very painful how are you why are you traveling with them why are you not trying to rest why are you doing these dangerous things hmm 
I don't really have a choice, to be honest. You already know about the prison thing. You guys mentioned that you were in prison, yes. Now, this is one of the conditions to us being alive right now, is that we are just kind of... Uh, I mean, basically forced to be doing this, but I guess it's kind of nice. Just run away. Just be useless. Don't be a useful person. <laughs> then you can just do what you want. You I don't, don't have really want to do anything. Don't have to suffer for them. But why would I not? They have been kind to me. There's not many people that do. Not being who I am. They're your friends. Yeah. I don't really have anywhere else to go anyways. I know that feeling. Well, the, the Lodge takes care of those that can't take care of themselves. If you ever feel like you want to get away from this madness, talk to Dan, uh, Damis. He, he'll give you good jobs, jobs that don't stress you out. He'll help you. Hmm. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I should be taking watch and you should be sleeping. I'm sorry. No, oh, no, thank you. Uh, thank you. What happened to you? Uh, with your acid? Um, have you ever dealt with were rats? No. They're tough fuckers. Really tough. They're really strong. You can hit them as much as you want. They They don't break down. They just keep going. I grew up in a village of were-rats. I used to be one myself. I am. I'm still infectious. Um, but uh, they tried to, to heal me. And when they were trying to heal me, I lost my resistance. It made me a very easy target to bully. I could not fight back. There was no chance. But one of the books that Damas gave me had, had a way to turn the burning rose into a liquid that could actually hurt other were-rats. And I thought I'd be smart and use that liquid to defend myself. And they just took it away from me and used it on me. They just poured it on my face. I'm sorry to hear that. And you shouldn't fight back against stronger people. It's dumb. You just stay out of people's way. It's the best way to get by. If it's any consolation, you seem scared of me plenty. People pick on me too. So size is not really... People are just shit. They are. They are. <laughs> All right, okay. So during that nice little scene to a close, yeah. <laughs> um, you guys wake up refreshed. You have, uh, those of you who suffered necrotic damage, you get that back. Oh. And those of you who are able to pick up on this, you notice that the kind of like the papery skin um, that you kind of get from aging has completely disappeared. It's like a good night's sleep has managed to get you through it. You get all your side points back, you get all your hit points back, you get any, not that any of you have any spell slots back. Oh no, Zoltana does. Um, you get all of that good stuff back. Um, nice. You guys are up and ready to go. Nice. So you've all rested and recuperated. You make your way back down this tunnel. Uh-huh. What are you doing now you're down there? Dying. <laughs> That's my plan, ultimately, but not what you're doing right now. Mm. Fuck. Dying. Uh, <laughs> dying. Being okay, sneaky. Not- Aren't we yeah. all dying slow cellular so, deaths? All right, what to, give an, uh, to give a serious answer, thank you. Uh, we're going to sneak down that tunnel and see if the things are still there. Okay, uh, I would like a stealth check from you. Squaz is going to reiterate that he thinks those creatures might be as afraid of us as we are afraid of them. Okay, that's fine. Wow. 26. 
23. Even Zoltana got eight. double digits. 12. Do you know, a. in 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 celebrating a double digit from Zoltana, <laughs> uh, you guys managed to make your way down there. You think without being spotted. Um, I'm going to let you roll the 26 stealth and the 23 stealth, so I'm going to give you some information on what you see. Um, you see that there is a small humanoid um, hiding behind one of the stalagmites in this kind of mist. It appears to be about maybe four and a bit feet tall. Um, it's kind of dark down here. You can't really make out any real details. What do you guys want to do? It's fairly close to you. Um, in the mental link. Uh, should we talk to it, Balance? It can't hurt. I'd rather not harm what could be an innocent person, but... If it is scared of us, it's going to be even more scared if I show my face out there, so... Maybe we could back you up and you could go talk to it? If you're both okay with that. Sure. Sure. As long as I can see, just yell if there is trouble. We can hear you. All right. Okay, so... Uh, I'm going to convey that to Squash and telepathy, uh-huh. just be like... I'm going to walk around the corner and try to see if I can talk to whatever it is. If I yell, help, help, I'm dying, then you know what to do. <laughs> Squash gives an enthusiastic nod, and he's going to... I think it's a dwarf. I'm not sure. I'll, I'll address it in common first. Uh, so Valance is going to walk around the corner and in common just say, It's all right. We're not here to hurt you. Make a perception check. And I'm going to say that's just before you open your mouth. Oh, okay. Nope, that's a nine. Nope, you don't hear or see anything of any significance. <laughs> nope. Um, as you as you say that, you hear movements to one side and you see a little head pop up and it says, Uncle Balance, I'm scared. And you see the pigtailed head of Taylor's. Hello, uh, Squash here. Uh, thanks for listening to the most recent episode. Um, I just want to encourage you to check out the Spark Network at the Spark.network. They've got a bunch of cool shows, and I highly recommend you check some of them out. Uh, you can also, uh, if you want to interact with the TLT cast, you can actually find them on Twitter at TLT Pod. Uh, they're actually quite active and uh, interact with their fans a lot. And if 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 you really like uh, TLT, you can. Get us some drug money on Patreon. I mean, normal money on Patreon. Um, and we also really love iTunes reviews. Uh, if you if you like Squash or any of the things he's done, uh, you can go ahead and check uh, check him out on the audio drama, The White Vault. It's actually pretty good. Check it out. The Spot Network. Imagine what drugs can do for you. The Spot, Spot Network. Network. Imagine, Imagine what, what your idea, idea can, can do. do. Get ready for a new blend of superhero action and drama. Hey everybody, this is Lauren from Nerds on a Roll, part of the Spark Network. We're a bunch of superhero geeks playing Masks, A New Generation, a game all about social drama and the stress of being a teenager with superpowers. (coughs) Meanwhile, in Halcyon City... I don't pretend to be a hero. They pay a price for their powers. And I don't want to pay my loved ones my powers. I would gladly have given them back. But I have them now. I have to figure out something to do with them. Well, well, well. Look what the cat dragged back into the ring. Should have hung those gloves. I punch him in the face. (laughs) (laughs) When I'm free from this place, I'm going to break you like a twig. By the time I've let you out of that tube, you won't have the will to do so. You can find Nerds on a Roll wherever you get podcasts and make sure to rate and subscribe.